Hey everybody, this will be an introduction to assignment three, which is our Photoshop assignment that I'm calling the model to render assignment. Uh, so the process for this is we're going to take one of the models that you made for studio, uh, whether that is one of the precedent models that you've made previously or one of the design models that you are currently working on. I'm going to use Photoshop to cut that model out of its background and then place it into the burn it wood site hopefully scale it appropriately, add in people, context, and generally trying to make it look like a convincing part of the landscape, um, as well as add some textures and some other things to sort of make it a compelling composition. Um, in order to really do this um, project well, um, it's gonna be key to have good documentation of your models. So it's a good practice to be in anyways, especially in this digital format. Um, getting good photography of your models um, in general. I highly recommend using the sun as your primary illumination as it's going to be the sort of cleanest, most pure light and give you the best shadows. Um, this can be done either on your desk with um, good sort of light coming through a window or outside, say on pavement or something like that. Um, in general, I recommend sort of those neutral backgrounds that you might be able to get from pavement or things like that for portfolios as they tend to work out fairly well. Um, and then essentially we'll put all this together in Photoshop and then export in 11 by 17 of your final composition. It'll probably look something not too distant from what we have on the screen here, uh, which is sort of an example image that I made using a previous student's model. Uh, so I'm gonna transition over to Photoshop now um, actually, before I do, there's a couple of resources I've listed at the bottom. The first is Flying Architecture, um, which is a great site for general architectural visualization. Um, this guy is pretty fantastic at doing all different types of rendering from the sort of very abstract, the hyper-realistic. Um, so he's a great resource and a great site to look at for just general ideas on things. Uh, but he happens to have a list of... Um, it's a 2017 list, but it's still relevant. Uh, websites where you can get cut out people. These are people, exactly as they sound, that are already cut out that you can just place into your Photoshop files and will work perfectly. Uh, I think an important thing is building up this collection for yourself because you're going to continually use these things over and over again. Um, every project really needs to have people in it in order to understand it. Otherwise, it's hard to understand scale of architecture and the way people use it. Um, but it's also really good to think about who is being shown in buildings. If you're only showing you know, one demographic and it happens to be completely unrelated to uh, what the building's purpose is, then it really doesn't make sense. and doesn't help to tell your story. So a good example would be if you were designing a retirement home and all you had were a bunch of young people on a beach, they would make for a terrible argument for your retirement home. Um, the same thing for you know, a project, um, if you're doing something in Dubai or something in another country where uh, the population just isn't these, uh, say, white young people from Norway. You know, you really want to try to pick your people very carefully as it can be very meaningful and very important to your composition. Um, this becomes especially true when you're working on professional work um, and you actually have clients and people who are going to see your work. Um, it can be a very important thing to get right. So that's why this site is also great because um, it lists a number of different resources from around the world uh, where you can get all different types of people doing different things, different times of the year. Another good thing to think about is times of year. Um, if you have one person who is ready to go to the beach um, in their bikini or something and right next to it someone in a puffy jacket, really doesn't make sense and looks pretty silly in your, ski, in your uh, image overall. So it's good to pay attention to these things. Um, the other side here is Skalgabar, which I believe is made by a graduate student somewhere in Denmark or something. Um, it is just mostly pictures of uh, his hipster friends, seemingly. Uh, so it's kind of the go-to place when you're trying to find hipster entourage for your images. Um, it's a pretty good resource, and they're already high quality, and all these things are free. Uh, again, I'm always going to mention this, but it's always important to know Anytime you're using this stuff outside of school, say for a co-op or professionally, it's always good to make sure that whatever you're using, you are able to use. 
somewhere on these sites, they will, there's a readme here, it'll tell you whether or not you can use it for professional work or not, or distribution or any, many other things. Um, it's definitely worthwhile to pay attention when you start doing professional work as, um, you know, you can get sued uh, or your firm can get sued or something like that. And none of that's good. So um, just pay attention. Again, for academic work, no one cares. No one will ever sue you for it. Uh, you're not making any money off it, so it doesn't actually matter whatsoever. Uh, but if you are using it for professional work on co-ops, pay a little bit more attention. Uh, oftentimes co-ops will have their own collection of people. And if you use that generally, you know, they've been pre-approved and you'll be fine. Um, and actually sometimes they'll be willing to share that collection with you. So that's a good thing to uh, uh, potentially take away from your co-ops in the future. Anyways, I'm gonna transition to Photoshop now. So this is the image that I had on the cover of the assignment sheet. And I made this yesterday and just as kind of an example of the type of image that you could make. Um, it can go a lot of directions. I think this covers the sort of general basics of the various techniques that I'd like you to do, but you can go well beyond this as well. So if you wanna add a whole bunch more and make this into a whole sci-fi scene inside the park, by all means, go ahead. Um, but I'm gonna break this image down. So on the right side of Photoshop, we of course have the layer panel, or if I'm turning everything off, I can see I started with this image here, uh, which is a nice little tectonic model built on some sort of base. Again, it was a student model. Um, I think they did a particularly nice job with this one. It was a study one. Um, and then, of course, combining it with one of the images that uh, we provided for uh, Burnett Woods. So you can see Crossing Tower in the background, a bit of nostalgia for you. Um, the first task is, of course, taking that image and cutting it out. Um, this is a little bit of a labor intensive thing, but doing it correctly and sort of doing it as accurately as possible is very important to uh, make this a convincing image. Uh, one thing I will say is very often um, the first versions of portfolios that we see in second year and third year and such, uh, a lot of students will try to show their models this way. I generally don't recommend doing that. And when I mean this way, I mean not necessarily on the background, but just sort of as cut out on a white page. Um, for the most part, models I think are better served shown in their own context get a clean nice white background and the model will look good that way and it'd be easier to incorporate into your portfolio than if you're just trying to cut this thing out and do this it's a lot of work and most often it looks worse than if the model were just in the photograph that it was originally in the biggest reason is getting edges really clean like these are here um, takes some time and if you don't do it right, you get these weird little craggedy edges and it just doesn't look very good. But also a model without a background has no scale and it's kind of hard to read and understand. Now in this instance, we're giving it a scale because we're putting it into a background. Um, so it's a little bit different because it almost becomes a whole new thing, a rendering. But for your own work, generally I think it's best to keep it in its original context. So I'll go over that. So I'm gonna have another video that I'll uh, post immediately after this one where I go into the how-to on all these things a little bit more specifically. I'm just gonna run through uh, in a quicker fashion right now the sort of general layers of this project. Uh, so there's that. Um, I did a little bit of sort of painting on it in order to make it look like there's some of the shadows are coming from the trees. And then generally mess with the, use the curves adjustment to mess with the coloring on it, bring up the contrast a little bit. Um, you can see here I have kind of uh, faked it a little bit. So this model was clearly being illuminated from uh, this side, whereas the sun is definitely coming from the south, which is over by UC. But because it's in the shadow and the shadows on this side, it, it looks fairly convincing that that's where it should be and how the lighting should go. Um, next, some textures, which I just have two textures on here. I think I've asked, actually there might be three, but I've asked you to do, uh, I think three textures as part of this assignment. Um, and these are just textures that are brought in and overlaid on, and then they look fairly convincing as to their sort of real life counterparts. Of course, people are of the utmost importance, as I mentioned. Um, these people have had some adjustments done to them. So they were in full sun, now they're in shadow. They have their own shadows on the ground. Same thing for really all three of these. Um, let's see what else. So. I'd also like you to try to make some sort of manipulations to the ground. In this case, I put in a path to make it look like, you know, this uh, 
construction was actually really part of the scene. And part of that was to make it feel like it was connected somehow, so bringing that path in. And I'll kind of show you how I did that. Um, this is just some adjustment to the people, final curves adjustment, framing it a bit more specifically to the composition I was looking for. And let's see, put some shadows on the ground, make the thing feel like it's sitting somewhere. And it's not going to squirrel. I always put something in somewhere. It's a good thing to do. Um, you can see I have this uh, teal line running across the scene. And that's actually not going to print. That is just for me. It's a reference line, which you can get by just dragging down from the sides. Uh, but in this case, I'm using it to align the eyes of the figures in the scene. Um, that's a great way to make sure your figures are all the correct height. If they are standing on the same surface, and theoretically, if they were all the same height, all of their eyes would align in perspective. Um, in this case, we do have one person who's sitting, so obviously their eyes aren't going to align because they're sitting below that. So they uh, have to make somewhat of a guess of exactly how big they should be in perspective. Um, I think they're pretty close. You know, nothing here is 100% perfect. And these two figures actually might be a little bit big now that I look at them, but it's pretty close. Um, and again, just dragging down will bring those things out, and they're really useful. Um, not just for this, but there's lots of reasons why you might end up using them. Um, so I'm going to go over to another example. So this is actually uh, from the version of this assignment we did last year, uh, which wasn't specifically looking at uh, the same site. Um, it wasn't actually looking at a mountainous site like this, but the process here is really the same, so I thought I'd show this one as well. And you can see this is what it came from, which is actually another student model that happened to be sitting in the adjunct office. So if any of you were in there, uh, say early spring or last year in the fall, you might have seen this model sitting on the ground. One day I just took a photo of it and made this little rendering to go with it. Um, so the first things are needed a background. So I got this uh, mountainous scene and then combined it with another mountain scene, which are not exactly the same sort of landscapes, but in this case I felt um, some of the elements here I think were a little bit more appealing to my composition as I was thinking about it. And then, of course, cutting this guy out so that it fits within the composition. And then some manipulations to this, darkening this thing, and you'll see why a little bit later. Bringing in some foreground uh, landscape elements, in this case it was a lake, another foreground landscape element, and the reflection of the building above into the water there. And then some sort of faked glass material, which is just kind of painting in Photoshop. Uh, some just kind of compositional white blocks that I put in to sort of break up the composition so it's not a perfect rectangle. Kind of an unnecessary thing, but bringing in some texture. So in this case, making it look like a board fort concrete of some sort. Uh, some more glass reflecting the water below. A person uh, photographing whatever this boat-like building thing is on the water. Uh, someone hiking towards it. Uh, birds, because they're fun. And uh, you know, final curves adjustment. So. I'll talk about this more specifically when we get into the photo uh, portfolio assignment, but um, composition is, of course, one thing that is always very important to consider. Um, in this scene here, um, oftentimes what you look for in composition are triangles. So if you look at this woman here, she is looking towards this building. This guy is looking towards this building. And you can kind of connect those with your eyes. And you can see that this starts to form a triangle in this composition. Uh, triangles are inherently a please, pleasing to the human eye and tend to bring you in. If we took this lady here and let's just reverse her real quick. Oh, sorry. It's not like you want what I was doing. She's there. I'm just going to select her and so if we just look at the composition now it just looks like it's kind of falling off to the side and that's because our eye is inherently following the way she's looking and she's looking off in the distance this building is pointing off in the distance so we no longer have the same sort of visual balance that we once did um, 
this is sort of from the world of art, but it's still very relevant to architecture because we're entirely making visual media that we have to present to clients, that we have to present to uh, the city, that we have to present to contractors, and they have to be able to understand it. So using these tools, the tools of composition, we can help make a more engaging image that the client will like, that become more invested in, pay more attention to. Um, and it's just inherently a better composition. Uh, so that's that one. This was kind of just a simple example that these sort of things don't always have to be as complex as I just did. So this was, again, another student model that with just a couple of manipulations, I put a little person in, gave her a little shadow, and she looks fairly convincingly part of this composition. Um, now, for this assignment, you would need to do more than this. But just for reference for future assignments, you really don't have to do a huge amount to a photo in order to give it a little bit more life. So if you brought this and now put this into your portfolio, you know, the background here really isn't offensive. There's a little bit of brightness that may be a little distracting in the upper right-hand corner, but in general, this whiteboard and the little bit we see and the fact that it's blurred in the background means most of our attention is really focused on the object in the foreground. And this lady with the bright pink on her uh, shirt there really helps bring attention back to the model anyways. Um, so again, more for future reference, but you know these sort of subtle manipulations can be really uh, impactful to make your composition more interesting. And of course, this is that image that uh, I used in my composition, and I'll show you how to cut this guy out. Um, so before I do that, I'm going to end this video, and I'm going to start another one that's going to be more of the technical how-to, and I'm going to go through all the steps to make this guy here. Uh, so join back for that one.